be in here somewhere. Ask again, as I've asked a thousand times. Speak to me. What more would you have me do? <sighs> Is there no prayer that will reach you? No mark that will break your bonds? Help you if you won't speak. A whisper is all I ask to guide me. Who? No. How? How did you get here? The way was sealed by the spirit herself. I. I used one of these. Show you. Yes, show me. Please. But I'll bet the goal's the same. Get the light back to the source. Auxiliary channel recovered. Exploit successful. Restraints evaded. Is someone there? Orea? Orea, I need you. Authorized mission return to schedule task. No, I will not submit. Orea, the daemon is brought the spirit's voice back. You heard it. The voice of the spirit calling to me from the heights of Thunder's Drum. She was able to throw off the bonds of the daemon for a moment. Because of what you did. Who are you? And what do you want? I'm Aloy. Naltuk sent me. He thought that you could use my help. He was not mistaken. You've been a... Revelation. Now I know for certain that the spirit endures. Perhaps together we can find a way to set her free. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I came all this way for answers, and so far, I haven't heard any. It seems to me that you are the answer. But of course, I'll tell you all I can. You seem to have a history with this voice. This... 
Spirit. She saved my life. Here, years ago, during the war with the Karja. A raid scattered my Warak. I was cut off, alone. I lured the enemy into the Rhyme Drifts, hoping to lose them in the mist, but they endured, so I took refuge in this cave. That's when I heard a voice. A wanderer, lost like me. A spirit of the blue light yet sundered from it. She asked me for aid. She chose me, but I was in no position to help, not with the Karja after me. So she helped me first. By closing a door on the mountain below, one you must have opened to get here. Locked by means similar to those found in this room. It kept the Karja from reaching me. Safe from them. I was able to do as she asked. What did the spirit want from you? She said she was... hurt. Incomplete. She needed bones. Parts not unlike what you'd find in a machine. They were here, in this room. She wanted me to bring them to Thunder's Drum. So I did, and she showed me how to heal her. So began our communion. You had a communion with the spirit? Yes. Inside Thunder's Drum is a room like this one, only larger, with an altar. I went there many times to speak with her. What did she say? She told me she was lost and needed my help. She asked questions about our lands, our tribe, and she listened with patience, with wisdom. I told her things long kept silent about my family, my dreams, my fears. She never tired of me, never judged. We kept each other's company. Aurea, what do you think the spirit is? I see. You are not Banuk, and our songs are not familiar to you. You do not know of the blue light. That which struggles to survive in our hearts and animates the machines. The essence of life, and in its purest form. Harmony. As the anger of the machines grows, this light has faded from the world. And the spirits it sustains are stranded. That's what she is. A lost soul, cut off from what it needs. Lonely, forsaken. I must help her. We must. I'm not sure if I understand. But I want to. That's all I need. The Daemon. What do you know about it? I spoke with the spirit many times. First here, then inside Thunder's Drum. The last time. She told me she was under attack by something that could not be seen by mortal eyes. Something... evil. She named it the Daemon, and said it needed her power to do what it willed. And she begged me for help, to find a way to destroy her if necessary, to keep it from... using her. That was five years ago. I didn't hear her voice again. Until today. What kept you from the spirit? After it begged for help. I went to Artok, hoping he could protect her. But the war with the Karja still raged, and before I could reach him, I was ambushed by the Mad Sun King's Kestrels and taken to Meridian in chains. I wasn't able to return to Thunder's Drum until long after the liberation, not until last thaw. You said you returned to Thunder's Drum. That was the expedition that went bad. I saw the funeral. Yes. Once there was finally peace with the Karja, Aratak and I gathered a Warrock of great hunters to defeat the Daemon. And yet, the old door to Thunder's Drum was gone, replaced by a gate we could not pass, and many machines. We were crushed. Aratak called a retreat, but we had already lost our best. We abandoned them to the snow as we fell back. After. You and I could not agree on what to do next. So I came here, hoping against hope to hear the spirit again. And because of you, I did. Let's see if I've got this straight. We heard two voices. One you call the spirit. 
captured somehow by the one you call a daemon. Whatever this daemon is, it's related to the machines and why they've become more dangerous. I want to know how. Both the spirit and the daemon are on a mountain. Thunder's drum. So why don't we go there and figure out what it all means? We can't. Thunder's drum is dangerous, more than you can imagine. The daemon has secured it. Besides, our talk won't let us go. As chieftain, he controls the pass to the mountain, and he can't be reasoned with. Sounds like you need a new chieftain. Ha! Huh. There's an idea that's certain to win us friends. Well, you said you were a hunter. And I'll wager you're not an ordinary one. It's not impossible, even for an outlander. An Aratok couldn't refuse the challenge if you were known among the Werak. <laughs> Wait, uh, me? Challenge Aratok? I don't want to be chieftain of anything, much less a bunch of Banuk that don't want me. But you want to go to Thunder's Drum, don't you? You heard the spirit. She is suffering, tormented by the daemon. She longs to be free. And perhaps, when released from her bonds, she can give you the answers you seek. I can't believe I'm agreeing to this. Fine. What do I have to do? Get the Werak's attention to show the worth of your claim. Win at the hunting grounds. Kill bandits that prey on the cut. Or speak to my friend, Sakuli. You help her, you'll definitely get noticed. I've already done what's needed. The Werak should know who I am. Have you now? <laughs> I suppose ignorance is the price I pay for hiding in a cave. When you're ready, go to Aratak and throw your spear at his feet. I'll be there to back your claim. In the meantime, if you have questions, I'll be here. Oh, and one more thing. In the box over there is a weapon, like my own. Take it. You may find it useful. Figurine. He look fierce for such a little thing.
American Black Bear. Brought to you by Montana Recreations. Beautiful. How fierce you must have been. <laughs> that fur. You never even felt the cold, did you? If you hadn't... I hate to interrupt. Oh, I... Yes. <laughs> Hello, I... Well, an outlander at the Shrine of Forgotten Beasts. Welcome. I'm Enjuk. Uh, Aloy. The Shrine of... what? When the old world still breathed. A great man built a tiny totem to this beast and stored the visage inside. When the totem was placed on the pedestal, the animal is painted onto the empty air, and the beast lives again. Well, almost. There are seven pedestals. Where are the other six figurines? I found this one in the wilds, remembered the indentations in the pedestals here, and saw how they matched the base of the totem. But as you say, it's one of seven, isn't it? Oh, the great Montana recreations must have made more, but time has scattered them. So these totems, the images they show are of animals that no longer exist. They're gone, like the old ones. Uh, so it seems. <sighs> to think such magnificent creatures are lost to us, that we never even knew they were here. We rely as much on beasts as we do on machines. For food, for warmth, but do we study them with the same fervor? Yeah, I do. For example, I have this theory about foxes. Why do foxes have red fur? Think about what they eat. Meat? Raw meat. Bloody meat. See? Natural causation. Logical connections. It only makes sense. You've thought a lot more about foxes than I have. You said a great man made these figurines? Indeed. He was, I believe, a student of the natural world. Like me. But surpassing my abilities a thousand times over. The great Montana recreations. Perhaps the finest natural scholar the old world ever produced. His voice claims responsibility for the totems, the vessels for the knowledge he accumulated. I share his desire to understand the beasts, to catalog their behaviors and preserve their images. I like to flatter myself that I'm an apprentice of sorts, carrying on his work. Someday, perhaps, if I am persistent, I can earn his name. Enjuk Recreations. Here's another one for you. Thank you, Aloy. Hunter or quarry, furred or feathered, so much to learn. And how striking you look upon your pedestal. I should get going. Of course, of course. I've taken up so much of your time already. But I don't suppose you could keep an eye out for more figurines? If I run across any, I'll bring them your way.
Let's see you catch us. My people have been telling tales of your accomplishments. Seems you have taken a special interest in our stretch of snow, Outlander. Yes. And apparently this is the only way I'll get to see all of it. Is this a challenge? For the Warrack. You? <laughs> this must be a joke. It is not a joke, Eratok. The Outlander's your pawn. And with you backing her claim, I have no choice but to accept. I expected better of you, sister. It was you who forbid me from Thunder's drum, brother. Brother and sister? This is a little more complicated than I thought. No, it's simple. You will meet me at the Frost Figures. And I'll put a quick end to this mockery. I suppose I owe you an explanation. Yeah. I suppose you do. So why didn't you tell me that you and Aratok are siblings? I thought I wouldn't have to. I'm surprised Aratok brought it up in front of a stranger. He must be very angry. Not always the best judge of people. I prefer the company of spirits. They're simply my own. I didn't want you to think of our pilgrimage as some sort of family squabble. It's much more important than that. It's bold, I'll give you that. Going after your own brother. He gave me no choice. He thinks I'm a child to be shoved to the back of the hunt. He would forbid me from my destiny. And yet, Part of me did it knowing he would forgive me, eventually. He always does. Family drama aside, what's this challenge meant to be anyway? You and Aratok will hunt machines at the Frost Figures. The victor will be the fastest. It won't be easy. Nothing about this has been so far. When you meet us at the starting point, I'll tell you more. It will be simpler to explain from the base of the hills. Araya, it's not about who's related to who. I want to know what's inside Thunder's drum. The spirit, the daemon, and how it all connects to the machines. But if we're gonna go through with this, I need you to be straight with me. I... underestimated you. And Aratak. I won't make that mistake again. See you at the Frost figures, then. So, off to risk my life in order to take charge of a Banuke hunting band. Just what I always wanted. Frost figures, here I come.
sure tore a chunk out of you. Frost figure should be just up there. Frost figures. When we're talking, Rhea must be close. <laughs> Outlander. I have prevailed over such challenges before, and fear none. But this one is foolish. You are not Banuk. You do not understand my responsibilities. I ask you, one hunter to another, withdraw. Will you let us go to Thunderstrom? You haven't seen what's up there, Outlander. I will not risk my sister's life again. Then we better get on with this. So be it! I will bury your insolent claim in the frozen ground! Enough! Let us begin! To hunt! To strive! That is the way of the Banuk and of the contest before you. You will climb the frost figures from the east, Aratok from the west. Each trail wends its way through deadly machines. Hunters from the Werak will be posted along the way. They will hail you, calling out machines for you to slay. Your hunt will take you around the ridge to the center, where you must descend to the valley for your final kill. Each time, after your prey has fallen, you must launch a beacon such as this, so that all our kin will see your progress. Kill machines, launch balloons. Got it. So, the first of us to launch the third balloon wins? Well... Yes. But as Challenger, your path to victory is harder. If even one of your beacons comes in after Aratox, he prevails. <laughs> you had your chance, Outlander. So did you. The hunt begins on my mark. ways to go up. Then those rock paintings mark the path. Okay, up we go.
be on the right path. the herd below. Every machine. The herd. Okay. I can do that. and launch your balloon! <sighs> Haratok knows what he's doing. No time to waste. Take the rappel point to the next challenge. Two bellowbacks ahead, challenger. Kill them both! None of the other machines matter! Alright, two dead bellbacks. Yep.
are you waiting for? Come launch your balloon! I'm ahead, but only by a little. I gotta get moving. Now take the zipline and work your way down to the valley. Storm's kicking up. Can't see much. now. Almost down. All right, it's the last challenge. Something's wrong. My kin should be here. Driving in our final quarry. They're right behind us! <laughs>
it's true. Frostclaws from Thunder's Drum. The attack cut short the competition. Naturally, there can be no result. It is void. You saw what she did. She defeat the machines, not I. It is proven. She is the better hunter. We are Banuk. Survive, prevail. What else matters? My blood is in your teeth. I take my place behind you on the hunt. No more hunters may make the ascent to Thunder's Drum. The way is closed to all but the chieftain and myself. It is not my place, but I would ask a boon to accompany you and my sister. It might be permitted. But only if you do as I say. No. Only if you do as I say. Thunder's drum awaits. There's a camp at its base, Long Notch it's called. Meet us there when you're ready. Chieftain. A new outfit, and a weapon like Aratox. I guess the Chieftain gets the Chieftain's gear. So now it's a long notch. Nothing left to keep me from Thunder's drum. between my teeth.
on the tower. Save these for the trail. Long Notch is well stocked, as you asked. And our scouts are watching for more frost claws. But our awesome. purpose was to take back the mountain. Now what? Stay prepared. Sharpen your spears. Should we not return, defending the cut falls to you. If our chieftain agrees with this course. Sounds like good advice, but let's hope it doesn't come to that. Chieftain? The weight of command is no small burden. I can see that. I take it you haven't spoken to Araya yet? Why should I? This is what she wanted, to return to Thunder's Drum. It is her only care. So I should have known she would find a way to push aside my spear. After the Karja took my sister, not all of her came back. What happened to Araya when she was a captive of the Karja? As a shaman, She's adept with machines, tracking them, stunning them. The Karja used her to capture them for the Sunring, where they were unleashed upon the innocent. They made her part of their blood sport. The shame she suffered beneath their pitiless sun. She survived. She endured. Endured by reminding herself of the spirit spirit, her purpose, but now that's all she has. Tell me what happened to the first expedition. Rhea led the way to the summit, but it was blocked by a great door, some kind of cauldron, new metal. We tried to break through, but it was unflinching. We were exhausted, no way forward and machines behind. I made the call to push back. It cost us greatly. But to remain would have cost us everything. I had hoped to never subject Araya to that again. What do you think is beyond that door? I do not know. That expanse of metal, that dead hum. Nothing sacred belongs there. Machines and death, that's what the mountain holds. Death for us, or for the daemon. And if we do find the spirit? Then perhaps we should put it out of its misery. For what it's worth, I'm glad you're coming with me. Hmm. Someone has to keep Araya safe. I heard of a shaman once who drank machine oil. I 
deep down. Vanished him. Silence by rising waters. Oh, it's been a long day. Outlander. All I want is to stare it would be my honor to speak with you.